So we're pretty much done in this room. I think we just went over all of the cabinets, all of the games on both sides. But we're not done yet. We still have a whole other room to go and kind of like a midsection in between. So if we go out here, we kind of have the laundry room slash some video games on this side of the shelf. So I'm, I'm slowly taking over the laundry room. I mean, who needs clean clothes, right? Uh, the top here, we have um, a whole bunch of older stuff, like a Timex computer, Atari uh, tape player uh, for the computer in the box, Atari flashback. I mean, it's not so old, but it's representing something old. Uh, some boxed um, Atari games. Uh, for like uh, the old computers and the XE. Uh, some random um, computer programs and stuff here, some older stuff, uh, some controllers for Atari and stuff. So yeah, overall, it's kind of older stuff. And on the left, um, it's have random code books and things like that. I mean, they're kind of silly. I mean, you can easily find any of that stuff on the internet these days. And I definitely don't need tips on how to win at Super Mario Brothers games, but they're, 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 uh, they're old books and stuff. Uh, so it's kind of funny to give them a read every once in a while. So down here we have my box Super Nintendo collection. So uh, off to the left here, uh, we have Super Famicom games, so basically the Japanese version of uh, the North American games. And the boxes are a bit different, but overall, the, the art, I find that the art on the Japanese boxes is usually a lot better. Uh, I don't know, but the overall, um, I really like the Super Famicom boxes. They're a lot slimmer and uh, kind of easier to store. And I could get a lot more on the shelf if they were all the same size as the Super Famicom ones. But overall, uh, my box Super Nintendo collection, it's not bad. Uh, I have quite a few uh, the decent games, like all the Donkey Kong Countries, Chrono Trigger Complete, and uh, things like that, Breath of Fire 2, um, and other things too, like uh, Super Mario All-Star. So overall, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with my box Super Nintendo collection. I mean, it's not as big as some people's, um, but I have uh, quite a few of the good games. And uh, overall, yeah, I really like it. And over here to the left, uh, we have a boxed Mario Paint, and that comes with the mouse pad and the mouse and everything like that. So uh, this is all complete. And it's not in terrible shape, not perfect, has a bit of a bit of scuffing, but still quite nice, and I've always uh, really liked that. Uh, so it's the right, over here on the other side, and we have a few different things. So over here, uh, we have my boxed Intellivision game collection, and there's a whole bunch of uh, different things in there. A whole bunch of different Intellivision games, you have like Dungeons and Dragons, and then sports stuff too. Uh, it's the right of that. Um, is part of my Neo Geo collection. So you saw some of the MVS carts earlier, and uh, here's some more of them. So you have like the Puzzle Bobble, uh, these are the MVSs, and these two are for the uh, AES, so for the home console. That's why the cases are a bit different. Um, these cases are actually uh, custom made. Uh, you can buy them online, and then you can kind of get the inlays for them since uh, the MVS carts. I'll get one out just for fun. Try not to destroy the whole shelf. So as you can see, we have like the Puzzle Bobble right here. Um, the games are very big, so normally these wouldn't come with cases. Um, they would come in like a box kit, um, like the King of Fighters 2003 right there, but since uh, those often got lost or thrown out, uh, you can get these cases to store them in, and uh, it's pretty neat, but overall, yeah, so these are the ones that fit into the MVS arcade machine, and then the ones in the smaller cases are for uh, the home console, and the cartridges are a bit smaller, um, but still, they're, they're really big compared to uh, other things out there. Um, below that, is um, my Vectrex collection, and they're all boxed and complete with the uh, overlays to put over the screen that change the color and things like that. And a whole wide range of games there. I'm actually not 100% sure exactly how many Vectrex games there are, although I don't know if there's that many. This might actually be a quite a good chunk of uh, the collection right there. That's the right. Uh, just some computer things. Um, Radio Shack computer game here. Um, it's a really old RPG. It's all in black and white and stuff. It's pretty crazy. It's actually kind of funny to go back and play that and see just how game, uh, see what games like that used to be like. Uh, below that, um, to the left here, so at, this is my Nintendo Power collection. Now they date all the way back to like the first year of Nintendo Power, all the way to even the most recent year now. So yeah, it's um, really widely spread out. I probably have about two-thirds of all of the Nintendo Power issues ever released, so it's not too bad, but I do like the way that it's really uh, widely dispersed. Like, I really love uh, reading the old Nintendo Power, like back before there was internet and stuff like that. Just the articles are really fun to read about um, all the accessories and games that were out back then, and even the letters that people used to send in back then, since, I mean, they asked questions that would seem silly, like, ask about similar things today, since you just look it up on the internet, but the things that people um, asked about, it, it, they're pretty funny to read. Uh, Nintendo Power today is still good, although I really like the old ones, though, <laughs> just to go back and, of course, look at things like my uh, favorite console, like uh, Games for It and stuff like that.
I mean, overall, I really love Nintendo Power, and even with the internet and stuff, I still enjoy reading through a whole bunch of issues every now and then. Um, going down from there, we have some video game themed uh, VHS's. Now, I actually have more in my room because, I mean, this is the only shelf I have for VHS's. Um, it's not very big. I might eventually stack some more in front or something like that. But you have all, like, the promotional tapes for, like, Yoshi's Island and Pokemon. And then other ones, like, game tips and stuff like that. And they're, they're really funny to go back and watch and just see how crazy things used to be. Like, if you ever watch commercials from, like, back in the 90s and say, wow, they'd never do something that crazy in a commercial today. Well, that's kind of what these videos are like. It's like all this 90s stuff. And it's really funny to go back and watch these things every now and then. We even have some cartoons like the Super Mario Brothers. There's three show and Donkey Kong and the Legend of the Crystal Coconut. So overall, it's really fun to go back and watch these things every now uh, every now and then. Um, below that, uh, we have some strategy guides. So uh, uh, yeah, so it's a whole bunch of different guides. Um, I used to get guides every now and then for games. I don't really use them when I'm playing games. I, I like to play games on my own, but um, if I find them at like stores and stuff while I'm going around and it's for a game I really like, I'll usually buy it just so I can look at the art and stuff inside and uh, see what it's like. Because overall, uh, strategy guides are usually fun to look through and see uh, what kind of tips they give you on certain things. And then, of course, there's Game Genie books and the Ultimate Code book with... Uh, it's like, uh, it's not Game Genie codes, but it's like codes like when you pause the game and you can enter like a button combination and unlock some sort of cheat. Those kind of codes, and those are usually fun to try out in games, uh, just to, just for a kick. Over to right here, um, we have a few more magazines, so I should have mentioned that at the end of uh, the, um, the, the guidebooks. There's a few other magazines, like some PlayStation magazines and Game Pro, and just some things I've come across in my travels. And also uh, two of my art books here are Arts and Lico and uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And uh, we'll definitely talk a lot more about uh, Ace Attorney uh, in a little bit. And then the last thing I want to show here is just um, on the shelf above are some more games. So uh, all these things on the left here are uh, my VIC-20 games, all these white ones, then even the, uh, the black ones over here. And then to the right, we have some uh, Commodore 64 here. And to the right of that, we have Odyssey 2 uh, in the case, and then all of my uh, loose Odyssey 2 games. And then to the right of this shelf is my Pokemon uh, black and white uh, stand-up display unit, uh, even with the boxes that are they have nothing in them. Um, but they're still neat that it's all complete. I like how this one's a bit more 3D than the Platinum one. But yeah, I've always uh, really liked the stand-up. It's uh, really cool. So now we're done this sort of little passageway here. We are going to move on into the second room. Now, this contains a lot more uh, just Nintendo display cases and things like that. And it's a lot more things uh, that are just on display rather than games. Although, as you can see, such as in this PlayStation cabinet, uh, there still are um, games out here and stuff like that. Um, I keep all of my PS1 games in here. Um, each of these sort of uh, CD case holders is uh, 12 deep. Uh, well, so with the exception of things like, of course, Final Fantasy VII, the case is a bit thicker. So it throws off that number uh, a bit when you have games like that. But overall, they're in alphabetical order. Uh, so that's why you get some things like you get like Madden 97 in front. Not because I'm showing everyone that I have Madden 97. And it's just kind of the way that it landed. But then you do get things like Star Ocean and stuff like that, uh, which is cool to have on display. So yeah, all um, North American games on uh, these two rows. Although if we move down a bit, uh, we do have uh, some PAL region games and then a, f uh, a few rows of uh, Japanese games, including uh, Beyblade and Final Fantasy VIII and uh, Mega Man X3. Uh, moving down from there, over here, uh, we have the Final Fantasy II uh, special edition of the Wonderswan Color. Now the Wonderswan Color was this pretty obscure handheld in Japan. Uh, it never really took off. Uh, two of the best games for it were Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Although I believe this came out before Final Fantasy was available on the Game Boy Advance. So it was doing pretty well until uh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 came out for Game Boy Advance. And I'm pretty sure uh, that was kind of the final nail in the coffin for it. Uh, moving over to the right over here. We have one of my favorite things in my collection. Obviously it's the most fun to play, but it's just so rare. It's my NBA 2-Ball demo CD, and it's in its awesome protective plastic baggie. These were apparently given out at, I think it was like the 1998 uh, NBA All-Star game. They were, they were apparently given out to people who attended, or I don't even think uh, anyone's really sure exactly who they were given to or how many were given out. But, uh, what's it called? I mean, there's hardly any out there. Only like three or four other ones have surfaced to date. So, I mean, it's a, a really rare piece. 
and it's not something you just come across every day. And uh, it, well, it's not worth very much because I mean, there's not very high demand for a, a demo disc of a basketball game. Although it is uh, important to note that two ball was never actually released as a full game so the only way to ever play it is with the demo CD but still there's not that high of a demand for it but I think it's still really cool uh, to have something like that in my collection uh, moving down to the bottom of the PlayStation cabinet uh, we have my big box PlayStation games so a lot of the um, like earlier titles uh, were released in these bigger uh, cases some of them plastic and some of them were just uh, cardboard um, then there's a few other things along the bottom of the cabinet here too, like uh, just disc holding uh, thing and a PSP box um, over there. And of course, Little Big Planet 2, a promotional display, <laughs> which is awesome. Little Big Planet's cool. Anyway, on the very bottom down here, underneath all this in the sort of bottom part of the case, uh, we have a lot of boxed PlayStation things. So we have like the, one of the original uh, PlayStations complete in the box to the right. Uh, we have the memory card adapter for the PS3, um, Japanese uh, light gun uh, for PS1 and PS2. To the left, you have the uh, small LCD screen uh, for the mini PS1. And of course, we have two mini uh, PS1s in the box here, two different variants. Um, a PSP box, and then over here to the left, um, a PS2 uh, slim in the box, and this one is actually the white version. Uh, which is really cool because you don't see the white one too much. Let's just try and get this out of here. Let's see, there we go. White PS2 complete in the box. And there's also a black one behind it too, uh, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I've, I've always really liked the white slim uh, PS2. It's just something uh, you don't come across too often, especially with the box. Because I don't even remember really seeing it in the stores. Because like I said, I was more of a, a GameCube guy, so I didn't pay too much attention to uh, PS2 uh, until quite late. So it's really cool uh, to see that. So yeah, that's mostly it for the, uh, the for the PlayStation cabinet. But moving on to the left, we have one of my favorite cabinets in the whole uh, whole basement, and that is my Game Boy Advance cabinet. Now this is really cool because it kind of shows off all the different generations that Game Boy and uh, Nintendo portable consoles went through. Um, of course, the Game and Watches were out there, um, but this is kind of where Game Boy starts. So on the top. Uh, we just have uh, various different carrying cases for all the different kinds of Game Boy, like the original Game Boy in the back, Game Boy Advance, SP, uh, some DS holding cases. So I had to just put those at the top, uh, so they were kind of up there. And the rest of the shelves could be used purely for displaying the consoles and their uh, boxed, complete in box versions. So over here, starting on this shelf, we have the very first Game Boy. So we have uh, one of the original boxes right here and um, another version of it uh, to the right. And of course, original Game Boy. Uh, there's nicer ones in the box. This one does have a few scratches on the screen. And also, uh, right here I have a few of the different colors. So there was the black one and also the yellow one. Although um, I know I, I've actually seen red and green ones, although unfortunately um, I don't have them. Uh, to the right of that, we see the Game Boy Pocket. So, played the exact same games as the original Game Boy, except now it's a bit smaller, and instead of taking four double A's, it takes uh, two triple A's. And behind that, uh, I have a silver one, complete in the box, and also a green Game Boy Pocket, complete in the box. And the interesting thing about this one is that it's actually German. <laughs> um, I didn't even uh, buy it from Germany or online or anything, just uh, someone was selling it um, locally. And it just turned out to be a German one, which was uh, really funny, I thought. It's kind of neat to see that. Put those back. And also, yeah, so a few other colors of Game Boy Pocket. Red, and also uh, the pretty cool clear one, uh, which I really like. So moving on to the right, we have the uh, four-player adapter in the box, and also a loose one. And then to the right of that, we have power adapter, and a couple loose ones. The Game Boy printer. <laughs> And uh, two loose ones there. And then to the right of that, uh, the Game Boy camera. And a few different colors of it. I'll move these out to the side like that. So yeah, so there's the blue one. And also the yellow one. And yeah, the Game Boy camera is really neat. It only takes black and white pictures. And obviously now with really like pocket-sized cameras and your cell phone and everything like that, that's not really practical to use in the slightest. But there's like mini games you can do like taking people's heads out of the pictures and using them in games and stuff like that. It's actually pretty funny. And it's still kind of fun to go back and use every now and then. Uh, the shelf below that is dedicated uh, to Game Boy Advance stuff. So on the far left there, 
um, we have one of the wireless receivers that wasn't really used too much, um, but it's still neat to have it complete in the package uh, for the Game Boy Advance. We have the e-reader and uh, Game Boy Advance package set, which is pretty cool. And then we have a whole bunch of uh, different versions of just the normal Game Boy Advance uh, in complete in the box. And also a few which aren't, such as the uh, silver one, uh, which is really cool. I've always really liked uh, the silver Game Boy Advance. I thought that was neat. Uh, to the right, uh, we see the Game Boy Advance SP. And we have a black one complete in the box, along with a red, a blue red, and a light blue uh, versions as well. Behind that, we have a Japanese Game Boy Micro in the box. I believe in North America, the Game Boy Micro only came sort of like a plastic um, thing, like you see a lot of things coming these days. Although the Game Boy Micro in Japan actually came um, in a box, which was really cool. I really like this box, it's pretty neat. And it's all complete in there, of course. And then in front of that, we have a North American Game Boy Advance SP, or sorry, not SP, <laughs> Game Boy Micro. And it goes to show just how small it is. I mean, I'm usually like bigger screens when it comes to uh, games and stuff like that. Although when it comes to the uh, Game Boy Micro, it is really cool because it's so small, it just like slips into your pocket. And it's really easy to take places. And then to the right, uh, we have another e-reader with Game Boy Advance bundle, except this time uh, it's the purple one instead of the uh, clear blue one. On the shelf below that, we then move on to the DS and the most recent generation of Nintendo Portable, the 3DS. So we start on the left with the original DS box, the very first one that came with the demo of uh, Metroid Prime Hunters. And then to the right of that, we have a white DS Lite and black DS Lite, which are both uh, complete in the box. Which, and in front, we have the uh, red and blue DS Lites. And then behind that, we have the greatest portable console ever, the Nintendo DSi XL. I absolutely love that. I love the really huge screen. Maybe the 3DS XL will be able to beat it once it's out. Um, I don't know, but overall, um, I really love the DSi XL because the DS is my favorite portable console of all time, and to have that bigger screen is just really cool. And all the extra features and stuff it adds into are really great. So it's the right of that. We have the 3DS. Now let's move these doors over to the left so it's easier to see. Uh, the blue one uh, was bought on launch day, and then the red one, which uh, wasn't available on launch day, was uh, bought a little later on, as you can see, since uh, the price was lowered at that point. Um, so yeah, that's the red 3DS there, which is pretty neat. And then in front of that, we have Nintendo DS headset in the box, and then just a few other accessories um, over to the right. Uh, you won't see too many DS games down here, since uh, most of them are in my room. Uh, I don't really have anywhere uh, to display the DS games down here uh, at the moment, so that's why pretty much all of them are up there, although I do have uh, quite a nice collection of DS games as well. Although we will see some DS games in the near future from a certain series that I absolutely love. So, moving on to the bottom row, uh, we see some Game Boy Color stuff. So, yeah, Game Boy Color didn't really warrant its own individual shelf. Um, because I really don't have too much for it. And also, since it kind of fell in the middle of Game Boy Original and uh, the Advance, so it just kind of gets its own little corner here. So you see some different colors of the Game Boy Color. Uh, I also showed some that were hanging from the ceiling in the other room earlier. Uh, and also we have Complete Game Genie in the box, and the two different colors of the Game Boy Color, uh, Clear Purple and uh, the Pink, Complete in the box. And then throughout the rest of the bottom here, there's a whole bunch of uh, cool little accessories like uh, Game Boy Advance SP headphones, which you could only get through Nintendo Power when you renewed your subscription. Uh, complete, all the cards are in there. Mario Party e-reader card game. It's not the easiest thing to come by. E-reader is actually pretty cool. It's, it was really underappreciated, but it was kind of silly at the same time. I'm definitely going to go into it uh, in more detail someday. Uh, right here, uh, we have Pokemon trading card game Japanese uh, for the Game Boy. And right here, one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Pokemon trading card game, uh, Game Boy number two, uh, GR Don Sanjo uh, for the Game Boy Color. Really awesome game, which was unfortunately never localized. Although it's such a shame because it is a really incredible game. Way longer and a lot more fun than the first, even though the first was already really great. So to the right, we have the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl uh, DS carrying case, which you could only get um, if you pre-ordered uh, either Pokemon Diamond and, or Pearl, so uh, that's really cool. And uh, behind that, 
We have uh, Band Hero for the Nintendo DS, complete in the box. Man, who remembers when music games were like the most popular thing for like a whole how many years there? Um, in front of that, we have the Japanese exclusive uh, Game Boy Advance remake of River City Ransom, which is really cool, and I even have uh, the pre-order bonus that came with it. Um, the little figure there of uh, Kun Kunio Kun. I'm kind of stumbling there for a second. Whoops. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, here's some e-reader cards. I have a whole binder full of e-reader cards, but these are just some of the backups and stuff like that, like the ones for uh, Super Mario Advance uh, 4 and stuff like that that give you power-ups. So uh, those are pretty neat, and I keep my extra set in here. And then to the right, we just have a few games I've set here. Some of the cooler games, like uh, this one here, which actually uses solar power to kind of give you energy in the game, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the Nintendo DS, Rumble Pack, and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon uh, Red Rescue Team, which is a pretty cool game. Uh, to the right here, we have uh, a Game Boy box holder. This is like one that would have been used in the store which is really cool. As you can see, it fits perfectly and it goes pretty far back as far as holding boxes go. Uh, to the left here, uh, we have a light boy to try uh, to light up your screen uh, for your Game Boy. And if you look way in the back there, we have some more box accessories such as the link cable uh, for the original Game Boy and Game Boy printer paper still in the box. That's probably not the easiest thing to see. I think that's really cool to actually see the printer paper still in the box. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, so if you look at the very bottom here, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> I haven't really organized this too well, uh, but I should point a few things out. Um, you're not going to see too many Game Boy games and uh, Game Boy Advance games, or uh, what's it called, even uh, Sega uh, Game Gear games uh, lying about, because I do keep them in cases like these. I kind of keep them organized. Although, as you can see, there's a whole stack of Game Gear games here which aren't so organized. But yeah, so as far as Game Gear games and Game Boy games and stuff go, uh, they're all kind of down here, so you're not going to see too many of them um, elsewhere in the room. So over here, uh, we have uh, part of my computer collection. So we have some like, really old stuff over here. Uh, here we have some Mac stuff, and right here we have this awesome uh, retro gaming history poster made by my good friend Fabio. Hey Fabio, <laughs> right here uh, we have a Mac monitor and some really old Mac computers, like one of the original Macs, Macintosh Classic 2, and the Macintosh Plus, is long, along with a really old sort of a IP, a IBM computer there. Uh, speaking of old to the right of that, uh, we have a Texas Instrument a TI-99 uh, with some games in this case underneath, although that's definitely not all of my games. I have a lot more um, in other places. They just don't all fit over here. Uh, and to the right of that, uh, Tandy 1000 uh, Personal Computer EX. And on top of that, uh, the Commodore Plus uh, 4, which is a really cool computer, and it's one of my favorite Commodore computers. It's just really cool to use, and it's nice and compact too, which is good. Alright, so here we have another World of Nintendo cabinet, and in this one, uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, GameCube Wii and Nintendo 64 games. So starting with GameCube games, I absolutely love the GameCube. It is one of my uh, favorite consoles of all time, almost right up there with NES. I mean, it just has so many games I really like, like Mario Sunshine, uh, Wind Waker is my favorite Zelda of all time. There's just so many great games, and I really enjoy collecting uh, for the GameCube, uh, especially the big, bo uh, big box titles and things like that. And then over here to the right, uh, some people might have saw me uh, pick this up. Um, a whole bunch of Japanese GameCube games I got at the same time as the Japanese GameCube I talked about way back when. And yeah, I absolutely love uh, Japanese GameCube games and just the nice small cases they come in and they all have this nice cover to them. Uh, it's really neat. I mean, it's nice and compact. It looks a lot nicer than the, uh, the bigger CD case considering it wasn't necessary uh, since the discs were so small anyway. So I've always really liked that. Uh, right here. Uh, we have uh, one of the Club Nintendo in North America, Platinum Rewards, uh, with the really neat uh, Super Mario Brothers and uh, all the other characters uh, figure. It's really cool. I think in other regions you can just get it with points, but here it was a Platinum Reward, and uh, it's really neat. And this is the box for it. Uh, right here, I have a really old trophy figure with scorecard, uh, Gibdo Attacks Link. <laughs> it's uh, really old, and it's kind of crushed, unfortunately. It was like that when I found it, uh, but it's still... Uh, a really neat piece, and it's interesting to see uh, what other ones are out there, too. Uh, I don't even think there are uh, all Zelda ones. I believe there was even some, like, Punch-Out ones or something like that, too. Overall, I think that's really cool. Uh, moving down to the next shelf, 
we have some Wii games. So these are just the, the Wii games I picked up over time. I, I, it should be noted that these are actually not all of my Wii games. Um, some of my favorite ones are actually up in my room. So you have like Warrior Land Shake It, uh, Smash Brothers Brawl, uh, Mar Super Paper Mario, actually Super Paper Mario is there, like Mario Galaxy, stuff like that um, is upstairs. So you do see quite a few things here. Sonic and the Secret of Rings got banished to the basement. No, <laughs> no but anyway, uh, then moving on, uh, a few more things like the Deal or No Deal, a special edition set. And then, sort of like my Professor Layton corner over here, which isn't super impressive, although it does have uh, the North American and European versions of the DVD, and that fell over, but uh, the, I actually bought the European version because I didn't think that uh, there was going to be a North American release, and then like the week after I bought this online, they announced the North American one, uh, so it was kind of annoying, but I mean the European one came out like a year earlier or something like that, so I figured if it hadn't been announced, it wasn't going to be announced, so it was kind of silly overall, and then right here, I have the uh, both parts of the Japanese uh, manga that are based on the movie, so you get all the cool uh, color scenes in there, and the stuff like that, which are a lot of fun to look through. So yeah, both parts of that were there, and then I also have uh, the Professor Layton figure uh, based on uh, the Eternal Diva movie, which is a really cool. I really like that figure. Uh, moving down a shelf, we have boxed Nintendo 64 games. I don't have too many Nintendo 64 games boxed, although I do have uh, quite a few of the cooler ones, like uh, Legend of Zelda games, both in the box, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Hey You Pikachu, and uh, Mario Party 1 and 3, stuff like that. Uh, Nintendo 64 uh, games complete in the box are pretty cool. And then moving down one more shelf, the kind of the bottom of the t of the uh, uppercase, we have my Nintendo 64 collection. Now I have almost 200 Nintendo 64 games, and uh, that's almost all of them. I mean, there really wasn't too many N64 games. So kind of as a side project, um, and I'm not working on NES, um, I'd like to see just how many 64 games I can get. Just like I said, there's not too many. So it would be cool just to see how high up there um, I can go. Um, over to the right, we have a few things. Also should be noted, uh, some of these 64 games are imports. This whole uh, right row here are import N64 games. As you can see, the Japanese version of GoldenEye has the infamous face that everyone seems to uh, know and love. But yeah, I have quite a few good uh, Japanese 64 games like Mario 64, Paper Mario, and uh, stuff like that overall. Uh, this right here is the Supervision, the Wataru Supervision, and this was kind of like a competitor to the Game Boy. It wasn't super successful here, although I believe in some other places it actually was. As you can tell, it looks a lot like the Game Boy, the D-pad, B and A buttons, a uh, similar kind of screen, and uh, even games, which almost look like a mix between Game Boy and uh, Game Gear games. But overall, uh, pretty interesting and obscure console. And I also have a boxed one um, elsewhere, but this one's just kind of here because I don't really have anywhere else to put it at the moment. To the right here, uh, we have a Jenga, Donkey Kong themed, that I picked up from Nintendo World in New York on my trip there a couple of years ago. And this is really cool. Even just the design and art on the outside is really neat to look at. And then on the far right over here, we have a boxed NES Game Genie. Unfortunately, it's not with the rest of the NES things, but I couldn't put it in the cabinet because it's too tall. And I mean, I didn't really have anywhere else to put it in, um, out in the uh, NES cabinet. So I figured that it would hopefully at least be seen here. So uh, hopefully at some point I'll find a better spot for it than that. But in the meantime, it's not too bad, and uh, hopefully people notice it. A bit farther down, we have a few other things. We have a Sega Genesis kind of plug-and-play controller uh, with a few Genesis games in it. Uh, here's the box supervision like I was talking about, and a few games and cases in front of it. And also a new Super Mario Bros. Wii uh, collector's puzzle, which I also picked up, um, what's it called, in Nintendo World. Uh, when I went there on that trip a few years ago. Uh, so right over here, we have a few uh, random uh, video game themed toys. Uh, this right here, not Cranky Kong, is the, is a Game Wave. And this is actually a Game Wave carrying case that I've never really seen anywhere else before. I believe I talked about the Game Wave a bit uh, when I talked about the games in the other room. But yeah, uh, this is the carrying case for it. kind of looks like a pizza, car pizza delivery bag. It's kind of silly. Uh, but we'll talk about the Game Wave just a bit more when I show you the box in a second. And these right here are uh, two Game Gear carrying cases. Uh, both of them are different. And uh, yeah, they're pretty neat uh, to see carrying cases for that. At the bottom here, uh, we have a few really old kind of uh, portable consoles here. So we have like Coleco uh, Alien Attack, which is 
obviously quite old, and also uh, Radio Shack um, Astro Command, uh, which is quite old as well. In the back, we also have some uh, some of these things. So we have like the really old kind of portable uh, tabletop arcade cabinets. So like the Cubert right there, and the Pac-Man, and also the uh, the remake of Frogger. I also have a box to remake of Space Invaders in the back there too. So to the left over here. We have just a few more toys, uh, Mario Yachts and stuff like that. And also you can kind of see uh, the box for the Game Wave in the back. So there you go. So you can finally see what the Game Wave looks like, see what those controllers I was talking about look like. And yeah, they're all trivia games, but they can be fun uh, if you're playing them with, uh, with your friends.